What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to use Google Colab, which is a professional, free and easy to use environment for doing data science and machine learning work provided by Google. So you get an infrastructure, you get a Python environment uh, with the hardware provided by Google. You get GPUs, TPUs if needed to do your data science and machine learning work. And this can be especially interesting for those of you guys who don't have a very powerful computer, but still want to do um, a little bit more intense machine learning uh, work. You want to train neural networks that are a little bit larger and a little bit more complicated on a little bit larger data sets. This is quite interesting because you get a free and powerful environment to do your work in. So let us get right into it. All right, so the beginning is actually quite simple. You just go to your Google Drive and you right click and you try to create a new file, but you don't create a docs, sheets or slides. You go to more and you create a Google collaboratory uh, notebook essentially. So this is an IPython notebook like the Jupyter notebook that you can run locally. Uh, and you basically run it in the cloud running on Google's hardware. So this is not running on your system. You're not using your CPU, RAM and GPU. You're using Google's resources, which is especially as I said in the introduction already, especially if you don't have a lot of resources available. This is a very powerful way to do your data science and machine learning work. And um, in general, what I want to show you here today is not how to use IPython notebooks because I have a tutorial on how to use Jupyter notebooks and Jupyter lab and all that. If you're interested in the different commands that you can run in notebooks in general and how notebooks work, watch those videos. Today, I'm going to talk specifically about the Colab environment and what it offers. It's not too complicated. It's quite simple, uh, but we can get started right away. We can run just basic Python code here. So we can run print hello world. And this is again, as I mentioned, this is running on Google's uh, resources, you can see it said allocating, it said connecting, or it says connecting, then initializing. Uh, and then it runs, it's connected, we have the RAM and the disk, which we allocated now for our notebook. This is Google's hardware executing our Python code now. And this environment already has libraries available. So we can already go ahead and say import numpy as NP. And we can then say NP random, random 100. And this produces an array of 100 values from zero to one. So we have NumPy available without having to install NumPy. And I think this is true for a lot of different data science libraries. So we have pandas SPD, we have uh, matplotlib, dot pyplot as plt. So those libraries are obviously available. You also have stuff like TensorFlow here. So import TensorFlow STF. And I think you should also have torch if I'm not mistaken. But the thing is, even if you don't have one of these libraries, so I think those two should be available by default, because this environment is specifically uh, targeted at machine learning and data science users. Um, but even if you don't have a library, let's say you want to have something more exotic, I'm not sure, for example, if the pandas data reader will be available, even though probably it will be available. Uh, but let's say something that's not available, I'm, I'm pretty sure that neural intents, my library will not be available here it's going to say that the library does not exist. It's going to say module not found error. But what you can do here is you can execute terminal commands. So you can just say here, um, exclamation mark, pip install, and then neural intents. And then you can run this uh, run this cell here. And it is going to install the respective library here on the Google Colab environment. So you can see it now successfully installed the library. And now you can use it here as well. So you can actually run commands in the terminal. So I can now say import neural intents. And then this works. So this is how you can do that. Of course, you can also run other uh, terminal commands, you can say you name a to see what operating system we're working on, you can see this is a Linux operating system, this might be important depending on what you're trying to do on it. So if you do something Windows specific, it's not going to work. Um, because this is running on Linux. Um, and this is essentially the environment you can do with that notebook. Now everything that you can do with a Jupyter notebook, just as I mentioned a couple of times already, this is running on Google's hardware. And you can share it easily, you can just share it here with another user on Google. And you can also connect it to your uh, Google Drive and to your files and all that we're going to talk about this here in a second. But first of all, I want to mention something that is very important to me personally, probably also to some of you guys, since I have a lot of fans uh, of Vim on this channel, you can activate Vim key bindings here, you can go to tools, you can go to settings, you can go to editor, and then you can go to editor key bindings here. And you can select the default, which is 
obviously the default and you can go to Vim as well. So you can select Vim key bindings to be able to use them here inside of the Google Colab notebook so you don't have to install any plugins, any fancy Java, uh, JavaScript, uh, JavaScript extensions in your browser. You can just type something here, then I can do something like change in a word or I can do something if I have, I don't know, hello and then world. I can say change inner parentheses. So I have the Vim key bindings. Also, you can see here the normal and insert mode being active in the visual mode. So this is something that is very important to me. If an environment doesn't offer Vim bindings, I'm not really satisfied with it usually. Um, that is that. What else can we do? We can change the runtime type. So this is what I mentioned. You can use uh, GPUs and you can use TPUs. So GPUs being graphical processing units and TPUs being tensor processing units. So specifically something that you want to use maybe in some neural network training and some deep learning projects. You can go to runtime here and uh, you can go to change runtime type. And here now you can choose an hardware accelerator you can go for GPU and TPU. Now they say here that, uh, or I think they should say it here somewhere. There you go. To get most out of call up, avoid using GPU unless you need one. Um, of course, Google also has only limited resources. They have a lot more than all of us, but still they don't have an endless number of GPUs and TPUs. So usually if you use a GPU or a TPU, you will have to allocate it. Maybe it's not free. So you cannot always 100% rely on this hardware being available. So if you try to use a TPU or a GPU for too long, maybe you're going to lose the access to it. Maybe you cannot even allocate it because someone else is using it. So you cannot always 100% rely on Google providing you with that hardware, but it is still a very nice thing that they offer. So maybe we can allocate a GPU right now. Uh, I'm not really going to use it, so I'm going to deallocate it here. But you can see now I have the GPU. Uh, allocated here. So I'm running this on a GPU. Maybe we can change this here as well to a TPU, see if that works. Um, no backend with TPU available. Would you like to use a runtime with no accelerator? Yes, of course. Um, so this is also a good example. Nice that it happened here in the video. TPU was not available. GPU was available. It doesn't mean that we cannot use GPU, uh, TPUs in general. It just means right now there's none. Uh, there are none available. So I cannot use a TPU right now. Uh, but if it is available, you can use it in your projects, you can use it in TensorFlow and in PyTorch and all that, uh, which is quite nice. So what else can we do here? We can also print the version of the packages if we're interested in those, but this is just general Python knowledge here. So we can go and say, for example, TF, I think I imported TensorFlow as TF, right? Uh, we can do TF underscore underscore version underscore underscore. And this will then show us what TensorFlow version we are working with and then of course we can do pip install and give me a different version. So um, this works. And also we can even send requests. So we can even do stuff like import requests because oftentimes with these online environments, it says, okay, you cannot send requests to random pages due to security issues and all that. But here you can even send requests. So you can say rest equals requests dot get and let's go with uh, neural nine dot com. I think this should work, hopefully. And now I can say rest dot text. And I will get my website here. So you can see here neural nine, let's develop brain. So this works, we can send requests from the Google call it notebook to other pages to APIs and all that, which is also quite useful. Um, what else can we do now? Again, as I said, most of the stuff that's interesting is notebook specific. So if you want to know what you can do with Jupyter notebooks, IPython notebooks in general, I recommend you check out the tutorials that I already have. The last things that I want to show you here is how you can actually use files, how you can upload files to this Google call up environment, how you can connect it to your drive to your Google Drive account, and also how you can uh, save and download the notebook once you have it. So the first thing you can do is you can just, uh, where is it here? You have the files, you can just upload files and then you can use them. Or what you can also do is you can uh, just say from google.colab import files and you can say files.upload and this is going to allow you to uh, upload files by clicking here on browse and uh, you can just upload something here. I'm going to go to my programming directory, maybe uh, from an old video that I have already recorded something like maybe a PDF PDF file here, let's take this one, I can upload it. And it's uploaded um, 
here as a file in line in in the in the Jupyter notebook and basically this returns the file so I can then use it and I can also again I can upload files I can navigate to those files and what can what I can also do here uh, is I can connect to the Google Drive account so I can say from Google dot collab import drive and then what I can do is I can say drive dot mount and I can mount it to a certain directory so for example content slash drive and then I'm going to get my Google Drive content inside of that directory now what you need to do here is you need to permit that this notebook can access your drive so I can click here on connect to drive I have to uh, say that I allow this to happen I connect it with my account here I allow it to do all of these things I click on allow and then I can mount my Google Drive uh, files into once it's done into the content directory that I'm going to end up with here and then I can access with my machine learning models the files uh, the files that I have um, in Google Drive so maybe I have to refresh here there you go I have the drive I'm not gonna go into it so I don't want to share all my files here but in that directory I have all my Google Drive files and I can work with them um, and last but not least what I want to show you here is once you're done maybe you want to do all the work here because you want to use Google's resources but then in the end you want to have the notebook onto your own system on your own system what you can do is you can go file save or you can uh, save is actually saving the notebook online but you can go download and you can download an ipython notebook onto your system and then you have it locally and you can upload it again run it here on collab this is just a very nice environment because it offers you a lot of possibilities that a lot of people don't have now some people have supercomputers gaming computers at home with strong gpus and it's enough for most tasks but sometimes you will need a lot of ram i, I don't know actually how much ram we have here maybe we can somehow see that here view resources okay this was actually the view resources uh but we have quite a lot of ram now off the top of my head i don't know how to see that exact number but i'm sure you can google it easily or just uh saying google call up see how much ram or something like that but you have way more ram that you probably have locally you have uh, GPUs, TPUs, you have a strong CPU, everything's running in the cloud, you don't have compatibility problems. So some libraries actually, uh, and I'm going to make a video about this soon, one library that I'm using in one of my future videos that I'm going to upload, um, does not work locally for me because of compatibility issues, but it works flawlessly inside of Google Colab. So this is also a use case. And also a lot of people just have very slow and old laptops or computers that they cannot do solid machine learning data science work with unless they want to wait for days to finish training a model that's actually quite simple. So Google Colab is a free, professional and easy to use alternative uh, for those people. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.